Hi, want to make a video? Okay. Hi, I'm Karen Margulis and welcome to It's an Artist's Life. I'm back today with a new tip for pastels, one of my favorite tips. And this is how to paint grasses in a, in a painting, in a landscape. And it's something that us landscape artists uh, struggle with. How to paint believable, authentic looking grasses without putting in every single blade of grass. So first thing you want to decide is just how much detail level you're comfortable with. Because sometimes you want to be more of a photorealistic painter or paint with more realism. You're going to paint more blades of grass. But for me, I like to suggest. That's the way I like to work. I like to have a little bit more expressive painting, more suggestive. Some might call it a loose painting. And so I don't want to put in every blade of grass. But I want to make sure that the grasses that I do put in look believable. So I want to talk to you today, and I'll do a little demonstration, of ways that we can paint grasses that look, that look good, that look, look believable. But there's some things that we want to avoid. And I want to show you, I have a little demonstration of things to avoid when painting grasses. So the first thing we want to avoid is to put our grass marching all the way across the bottom of our foreground. So in here you can see all the grass all across the entire painting. Uh, this is something you want to avoid because what it actually does is it creates a fence. You might as well put in post with barbed wire because basically you're doing the same thing. The viewer can't get past this fence and into the painting. So you want to provide some kind of opening in the grass so that you can invite the viewer in to see what's, you know, to explore what's beyond the grass. So one thing, avoid fences with your grass. Another thing you want to avoid, and I've done it here, done a really good job of making sure all my grasses are lined up like little soldiers. They're all the same size, the same shape, the same spacing. They're very regular. And we really enjoy things that are not regular and organized, but for some reason our brain wants to organize things. And you know when you paint trees, for example, and all of a sudden you look and they're all the same size, they're all the same shape, they're all spaced the same, and that's what happens, our brain organizes them. Well, our brain is going to organize grass if we're not paying attention. And in real life, grass is not organized. It's it's messy, so you want to have a little bit of a messiness to your grass, not so regular. So avoid this. I'm going to have to fix this. This is not good grass. Um, so what I want to show you now is the, the, the way we can make different blades of grass with our pastels. But before I show you the different uh, ways to paint grass, I want to give you one tip. You need to practice before you make the marks on your painting because you're going to put the blades of grass in last. We're going to build from the dirt up. So the, the grass goes in last and a lot of times we get nervous about doing it right. So when we're nervous we stiffen up and we end up with stiff little blades that don't look believable. But if we practice beforehand we'll have a better feeling for how we want to make the grass. So that's my number one tip really is to practice. It takes practice to feel confident enough to go in there at the end of a painting and put in your grass marks. So join me over at the easel and I'm going to show you some different grass techniques. Okay, so here we are at the easel and I want to show you different ways to make uh, grass and it depends on the type of pastel you're using. So if, there's, if you're using, for example, a square pastel, now this is a Terry Ludwig square pastel. That's my favorite pastel to use, by the way. But if I want to make grass with a Terry Ludwig pastel, I do a technique that I call press and release. So what I'll do is I'll just simply press and release. Press and release. Press and release. And what happens is I get this wonderful broken line. And this is a much more believable looking grass than if I just went in and drew the line. Look at the difference. Even if I try to draw it lightly, it still has a more artificial quality than these ones where I've pressed and released. Another way is to press and drag. Press and drag. And, and kind of pick up the pastel and put it down as you drag. So you get another broken line. You get a line that consists of lost and found edges. So you, you see it it disappears. You see it and it disappears. What happens is our eye fills in the rest. This is the way I like to paint grasses, where I'm suggesting detail. I'm not 
painting the entire piece of grass, I'm letting the viewer fill in the rest. They can figure out that it's grass by, by looking at the bits and pieces that show through. So press and release, drag and release is one really nice way to use this, the sharp edge of a square pastel. Then you've got your rounded pastels. And there's another technique that I like to use with that, and that is rolling it. So you take the sharp edge of a round pastel, and you simply roll it around on your paper. So roll, roll, roll it and move it. Don't just roll it in a straight line, but roll it all around like this. And you get, again, broken, what I like to call lyrical lines. They're, they're not stiff. If I were to draw with the edge, look what happens. I get a stiff fake looking grass, whereas rolling it gives me a nice believable grass that I can make this wonderful tangle, which is what really happens in real life. So rolling with the edge of a round pastel. This happens to be a Mount Vision pastel. Uh, I have um, these really great pastels that my friend from Finland just sent me. They're from Russia and they are uh, very hard but they make wonderful grasses, whether I roll them or whether I draw with them. That's the third way to create grasses, because sometimes you do want to actually make lines. You want to draw them. But what we tend to often do is go in and draw grass, like this. And when you do it like this, again, it's not as pretty. You want to have those broken lines or lyrical lines. So what I suggest when I, when I want to do that is I want to be, well, number one, pretend you're confident. So you want to actually come in and pretend you know what you're doing. You want to practice so you get the feel for it and you want to be relaxed. So I actually want to relax my body so that I'm painting the lines with my whole arm, not just this. When I'm nervous, I'm doing like this. But when I'm relaxed, I can create these wonderful light dancing lines and have your grasses sort of just dance across the page. You might press a little bit harder to give a little bit of a thicker line, L lighten up to get a thinner line, vary the pressure when you apply the stick, and you'll get a much more believable line or grass than if you went in and just drew them in like we typically want to do. I will often use hard uh, square pastels, such as a new pastel, to draw in some lines as well. And I'll do it in the same way. I never, I try to avoid being stiff and nervous, but instead just let the pastel dance across the page. And you get a nice, much more uh, prettier, believable grass that way. One other thing about painting grasses, and then I want to do a quick demonstration for you, is I start from the dirt up. So that means what I do is I first establish something underneath. So I don't paint blades of grass right away. So here I'm establishing what I like to call the dirt. Let's add another color to the dirt, light purple. And then introduce some green. And then we know we want our grasses to be green, so I'll put in a few more green shapes big shapes of green, not blades. Blades come last. Blades consider those the decorations or the sprinkle on your cupcake. So big, wide shapes of grass painted with the side of the pastel. Now I'm going to come in and put in some individual blades using the techniques that I just showed you. So rolling come on top of that grass and roll some grass. What else did I show you? Press and release. Let's press and release. Press and drag some grass. Right on top of your big shape. So what you're doing is you're breaking up your big shape with your sprinkles or your grasses. What else? We used the hard pastel and we made some dancing lines. So dance some of those lines across the grass. Pull some going the other way. This guy's going that way. This guy's going this way. All which ways because that's how grass really is and not having a fence. You have it all broken up and interesting. So you build from the dirt up and you put big simple shapes and then finally you put your blades of grass right on top. And that's going to give you grass that looks much more authentic. So that's my tip for today. Practice your grasses before you do it on your painting. And by the way, for you oil painters, um, I want to show you an oil painting real quick. 
This one, I just started dabbling with oils, but I do it the same exact way. From the dirt up, the darks, big simple shapes, then individual blades of grass that I apply with a palette knife. So it's the same approach in both pastel and oil, just different tools. Um, I want to do a very quick demonstration. I'm not going to narrate it, but I want to show you how I do a painting and put grasses in a marsh with uh, putting all these ideas together.
Okay, so that's it. That's putting it all together, working from big simple shapes, putting in the big the darks, then building up the grass color, and then finally putting in the details or the single blades. And I even sprinkled in a few uh, marshy grass uh, wildflowers. Um, the key to grass is to practice so that you have the feeling for what your different pastels, what kind of marks they'll make, so that you can make more believable grasses that are suggestions of grasses rather than a lot of individual blades of grass. So avoiding those fences and practice is the key. So I hope you've enjoyed today's installment of It's an Artist's Life and I'll see you next time.